Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura. And a while ago, my daughter-in-law had on a beautiful argyle sweater. Now, it had some fun prints to it, and I fell in love with it, so I did want to duplicate that in a quilt. Now, an argyle pattern, the shapes are a little bit more of a diamond than a square. But to speed it up, I am going to use pre-cuts and leave them as squares. And I'm also going to use pre-cut bias tape. Now this is a quarter inch. It has an adhesive on it, so I'm just going to be able to glue it down and finish it really quick. I've been wanting to make this for a while. I do hope you join me. To make this argyle quilt, we are going to start with a package of charm squares, where there's 42 5-inch pre-cut squares. And there's a little bit of a trick to finding a little pack that's going to work. What we want to do is find something that has the same values. So in this case, there are more of a medium color than a dark and a light. Here's another one that would work. Because you don't have one that's really dark and really light. Here's an example one that has a lot of dark, light, and medium. This is not going to work so well. And same with this type of one. What we're looking at is something that is going to kind of read the same as you go through it. Because what we're going to do is take this charm pack and match it up with only one fabric. We want to have one that's a little bit darker than our package. So in this case, you can see where that orange would work, that green would work, of course, red would work. But for this project, I'm going to choose the yellow. Even though it is a light color, there is enough difference between all of those colors that it's going to make this work. So we're going to have a square of our solid color and one of the patterns. We're going to need that charm pack, our solid fabric, and we're going to use bias tape. Now I'm going to use the already packaged one. It's fused and it's a quarter inch. You can see how this is going to show up nicely on all of those colors. Now you do not have to use the pre-made one. You can always make your own by using the fusible bias maker. So the two of these would go together. Now we're going to cut squares of our solid fabric the same size as our charm pack. The charm packs are five inches, but each charm pack can be slightly different. So take this measurement and cut all your squares this five inch square. And we're going to need 52 of these solid squares to go with the 42 squares. And you should be able to cut those squares from one yard of fabric. So you need to cut seven rows at five inches and then cut those into five inch squares. With those squares cut, we can now sew them together. So we're going to have 42 that go together and we're going to have some leftovers. Now to sew these together, we do have options of thread. You could use a light white or soft white, or you can use the color of this background. In my case, just because I love yellow, I'm going to use this yellow all-purpose thread. And you can press the seams in whatever direction you'd like, but just be consistent throughout the whole thing. I've pressed the charms going towards that solid piece, and I'm going to keep that throughout the entire quilt. The quilt's going to be done by rows, and we're going to have double of each row. Row one, we will need one charm. Row two, we will be using two charms. Row three, three charms. So this is how I like to lay out my rows. Row one will take one charm pack, but I need two of row one. Row two will take two charm packs. I need two rows, so that needs four. So I'll have two, four, six, eight, ten, and twelve. Now I'm going to be able to sew these rows together. So for row one, I need to make two of them. This charm is going to be in the center, so I need to sew a yellow on each side. And that will be two of my row ones. So for row two, I will need to sew two of these together and put a yellow on the sides. So this would be row two, and we know it's row two 
because they're going to have two charms in each row. So I'm going to do this to all of the rows. Three will have three charms in it. We need to just make sure both ends have that solid color. Once we get all those rows together, we're going to sew the quilt together in the long rows. We have all of the double rows sewn together. And those two last squares are going to go on the end on that one piece. So this is how that row one looks. We have a quarter inch overlapping on each edge. And we have two of these. This is now the beginning of two halves of the quilt. So each of these rows are going to be sewn together. One and two will go together, two and three, three and four, and so on. What we're looking for is each corner is going to have a yellow piece. So we are going to have a little overlap right there in that corner, just like we did on that row one. When you lay those rows out, you're going to see that piece missing at each end. But we do have every other block that charm. So we need to sew these rows together twice, and then we're going to have two of these triangular shapes. You can see we have this step. This will be one corner. Now we need to flip this over and sew that last seam together. And that really will now show you that this will be a quilt on a diagonal. When I did press the rows, I pressed the rows so that I'm able to see that quarter inch. So in this case, that seam was pressed up. So we do have a quarter inch space right there. If you pressed it in the other direction, you would still have a quarter inch. It's just a little bulkier. So the quilt is going to be trimmed here, and these points are going to be trimmed off. Now we could have actually made triangles and put them on, but I prefer to do squares. And that way that bias is stabilized. So I've drawn a line one quarter from that point. This line is going to help you trim after it's quilted and will kind of give you a good idea on where to stop and start our bias tape. To turn this quilt into an argyle quilt, we need to quilt it first. I did use a fusible batting, and this is crib size 45 by 60. It's fusible, it's quick, and I have to do no basting at all. So I have the top, the back, and the batting all on. I do want to quilt on each side of these seams in all directions. So I'm going to use my walking foot. The distance of your quilting is really up to you. The measurement I'm going to use is the measurement on my foot. So I'm going to use the foot as the guide and stitch. So I'm going to take it to my Bernina and stitch those lines and I'm going to continue with that beautiful yellow thread. Once we have those two rows of stitching done, we're going to be able to add the bias tape. The bias tape is going to go in the center of all of these blocks. Because I used a five inch block, my center point is going to be two and a quarter from each edge. I still have that edge that I drew and when I drew them and joined them, I do have that point. And I'm going to use those as guides. So I need to draw a line down the center and the center mark, which is two and a quarter inches. That is going to be the middle of the bias tape. So the bias tape is going to go right down and follow that center. Now I was going to use this black bias tape, but I've changed my mind. I want to soften this up. So I'm going to add a soft pink bias tape. So I did use my bias maker and it is a quarter inch tape. Because I did use this quarter inch tape, I do want to stitch it down with a double needle. Now you don't have to stitch it down with a double needle. You can go on one side or the other, or you could just do a zigzag and stitch that down. So you'd place it on that line, just do a zigzag with that walking foot and stitch it down. Or go on each side, but I'm going to use a twin needle. You can use the size three needle or a size four. So that size three needle will work and the size four needle. So I'm going to go to my machine and set it up for a twin needle. I'm going to use pink in both of the needles and in the bobbin. So I have that first line drawn that's going right through all the centers. 
So this fabric is going to run right down that center line. I have my machine set up for those two needles and I'm going to be able to just start. I do have this border line and I want to make sure I start outside of the border because this will all be trimmed off. I'm just going to take my time and just guide that tape right along my seam. And I'm going to stitch right off, trim that tape off, and cut my threads. So we have two beautiful rows of stitching all the way down. And on the back, it looks like a little bit of a zigzag. So I'm going to stitch all this little bias tape down in one direction, and then stitch it in the other. The bias tape is now stitched down. And don't forget, you can always glue base that bias down, fuse it down, make your own fusible bias, or buy that fusible. So you just iron it on and then stitch. This is all the quilting we're going to do, but we do need to anchor the sides. Before I trim these sides off, I do want to do a row of stitching, and that's just to anchor all of this down so that it doesn't stretch and I don't lose any of my ends. And that anchors all of these pieces. It also anchors that stitching and it prevented the bias from stretching. So now I can trim this off and bind it. I am really pleased the way this quilt turned out. I really had full intentions of using that black, but as quilters, it's nice that we can change our mind. And I'm really happy I used that pink. I did need 15 yards of that bias tape to do all of that little stitching. And I did have enough fabric to do the binding in the same fabric. So I needed one yard for that bias and the binding, one yard for that yellow, and one charm pack. Now we can always make this bigger by adding more rows. So row one, which was on each corner, took one charm square with the solids on each side. Two, two squares with the solids on the ends. So we have one in one, two in two, three in three, four in four. We can just keep on going. Sew those in rows, sew that center together, and you've got the quilt. This quilt does equal 39 inches by 45 inches. We needed one charm pack, one yard of the background fabric, and then I ended up using one yard of the pink. So now that I didn't use this black, I'm going to have to find another project. Thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and I do have a newsletter all under So Very Easy. I'll put some links in the description for you. Thanks again for joining me. Bye for now.